All right, so today we're going to wrap up our Redox chapter talking about batteries. And you actually got a chance to make some batteries in lab last week. And batteries are pretty unique. Batteries are where you can use electron transfer to store energy. that can be used to do work. All right, typically batteries are made up of half cells too. So as you saw in lab, you actually had two different beakers, each of which were a half cell. So let's take a look at the battery that you made in lab. All right, in lab, you had one beaker where you had a zinc piece of metal kind of sticking down into it, right? And then in your second beaker, you had a different metal that was made of copper. So I'll put copper over here. And then in between the two, you had this voltage meter and you connected those via alligator clips, right? So that's my cartoon voltage meter. And what else did you have that I'm missing here? The salt bridge, right? And that was a really important feature and we'll talk why, about why that is. So let's go ahead and add that salt bridge in. The other thing that's pretty obvious that we're missing is the solution. So each of these was filled with an electrolyte solution that was pretty important. And in this reaction, you had zinc metal, so I'll say zinc solid, that basically dissociated into a cation, right? So it went from zinc solid to zinc 2 plus. And that zinc 2 plus as a cation would actually go into solution. And we also created two electrons in this process, right? So in this half cell, this would be the overall half cell reaction. And we can show this symbolically, too, by saying, all right, in this reaction, we're basically kicking off zinc cations. So they're kind of falling out into the solution. Okay, so if we track those electrons, they have to go somewhere. So these two electrons will actually go up this wire, go over here, and then end up in your copper electrode. And so what happens in this half cell with copper is you have copper 2 plus, in solution that will happily grab the two electrons that are now in that metal and actually form copper solid. Oops, I'm forgetting my two electrons. All right, so let's go back to the salt bridge and try to understand why that salt bridge is so important. If you think about zinc 2 plus being kicked off of the metal and going into solution, you can't just create positive charges in solution. You have to have some sort of partner for them. So what will happen with this salt bridge is essentially we're going to move anions over to this side to counteract the creation of our cations. So the anions will shoot down over here. What about on the right-hand side? If we're absorbing copper 2 plus cations, we have to replace them somehow, right? So instead, we're just going to shoot cations down here. Let me actually move the copper to the other side just so I have more room to write. Oh, no. Let me clean this up. So we said cations would come down here. And then we said copper 2 plus will be absorbed by the metal. So the whole point of the salt bridge is to basically ensure that the solution has a net neutral charge. So we need to swap anions and cations over. All right, so now going back to redox chemistry. If we focus on the zinc beaker, is that an oxidation or reduction reaction? Looks like an oxidation, right? It's losing electrons in the process. So we call this our oxidation 
half cell versus the copper side we're gaining electrons so this is going to be our reduction half cell all right and quite often when we're looking at batteries we don't refer to it as the oxidation half cell or the reduction as half cell instead we refer to it as a cathode or an anode and the zinc side is actually the anode and I'll show you a trick for remembering these where the copper side is the cathode all right oftentimes when you look at a battery the cathode is represented with a positive terminal the anode is represented with a negative terminal and the trick I always remember is red cat so reduction occurs at the cathode So if you remember red cat, you can generally remember which side is your cathode and which side is your anode. Does that make sense? So it's pretty similar to the batteries you see um, at home where you have a positive and negative end. Positive end is always that side where reduction is taking place. All right, so if we run this reaction for a really long time, meaning we're depleting our battery, what do you think will happen to the anode, meaning the zinc? Will it get heavier, lighter, no change? Yeah, the metal's going to go away and become all cations. So over time, your anode will actually start to dissolve. Um, and your cathode, on the other hand, will start to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you actually take apart this battery, you can see the zinc on the left-hand side starts to basically degrade and disintegrate, where the copper starts to build up um, these kind of uh, clumpy bits called dendrites coming off the end. So zinc will lose mass. Has a loss of mass. The cathode gains mass. So it's a pretty um, simple experiment that you can do. All right, so what I wanted to show you really quick was a video of what's going on kind of at the microscopic level. And then I've got a more interesting video that I'll show you next. But let's watch this one first. Let's zoom into the atomic scale and see how this cell operates. Here, at the anode, the site of oxidation, Zinc atoms in the metal bar are in contact with the surrounding electrolyte solution. Each atom loses two electrons and becomes a zinc ion, which diffuses into the solution. The electrons given up enter the bar and join the flow of electrons up toward the external circuit. They travel through the wire and flow into the cathode the site of reduction. When a copper two ion in the cathode solution makes contact with the copper electrode, it gains two electrons and is reduced to a copper atom, which deposits on the bar. Therefore, as the cell runs, the zinc anode becomes lighter and the copper cathode heavier. Now let's close in to see the role of the salt bridge. The non-reactive sodium and nitrate ions of the salt bridge prevent the buildup of charge that would occur as zinc ions enter the anode solution and copper two ions leave the cathode solution. Such a charge buildup would halt cell operation. In the anode compartment, nitrate ions leave the salt bridge to balance the gain of positive charge as zinc ions enter the solution. Some zinc ions also enter the salt bridge. In the cathode compartment, sodium ions leave the salt bridge and nitrate ions enter it to balance the loss of positive charge as copper two ions leave the solution and are reduced at the cathode. All right, so that's exactly what you saw in lab. 
a lot of people were pretty surprised that when you didn't have that salt bridge, it immediately shut down your battery, right? And that, like he said in the video, is entirely due to the buildup of charge. If you have a buildup in charge, your battery will just stop because it has too many cations or anions on one side um, and it just won't work anymore. So that salt bridge is essential. All right, so before we do our practice video, let's do a, another battery. We'll practice drawing it together. So let's draw a battery for the following reaction. All right, and in this reaction, we're actually going to use different electrodes. In the first one, we're going to have silver cations in solution. And these silver cations are going to take electrons. And specifically, it's going to take one electron. And when you do this, you're going to make silver solid. So that's going to be one of our half cell reactions. And then in our other one, we're going to have zinc. Zinc, in this case, is going to start out as a solid. And then it's going to go to zinc 2 plus, which is now going to fall out into our aqueous solution and it's going to generate two electrons in this process. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to make a net reaction. All right, and this is going to be a little bit trickier. We do have to bounce both reactions. One thing I notice in this reaction is we had one electron that was needed for the silver portion, but we generated two electrons down here for the zinc portion, so we need to make sure that our electrons are balanced. But we can do this pretty easily. So what I'm going to do is multiply the top one by 2. So if we do that, now we've changed to 2 electrons. We still have balanced atoms, but now we can cancel out the electrons on both sides. So now if we think about our net equation here, right, we can say, all right, we had two silver cations that were aqueous. We had zinc metal on the opposite side that was a solid. And after this reaction was over, we're canceling out the electrons being gained and lost on each side. So we're going to end up with two silver atoms being formed. Let me actually keep that as red. And we're creating a zinc, whoa, 2 plus anion. Sorry, cation. I think I said cation or anion. All right, so that's our net equation for both of these half cells. Okay, so now let's break this down even further and let's show the silver one on one side. All right, so we've got a silver electrode. We're going to connect that up to a multimeter. And then that multimeter will go down to our other electrode, which in this case will be zinc. And let's put each of these into little beakers. Sorry, I'm going to zoom up on this. And I'm going to put a salt bridge across each of these. And like we saw before, silver in this case is gaining electrons. So electrons must be going this direction this time. So I'll write two electrons, two electrons. And we must have two silver cations, each gaining one electron and getting plated onto that silver metal, right? So in this case, it's gonna be two separate ions of silver. Zinc, on the other hand, we said is kicking off one zinc cation. And that's where the electrons are coming from, right? So it's the two electrons that were lost in that reaction are getting shuttled over to the left-hand side. All right, this is all in solution with electrolytes, meaning a bunch of cations and anions. What do you think is happening on the left-hand side with the salt bridge? Are we pumping in cations or anions?
On the left-hand side, we lost cations, so we need to replace them, right? So I'd say on this side, we're going to put cations down. So I'm just going to write positive charge for the cations. Versus the other side with the zinc, we were creating cations. We need to cancel that out. So we're going to shuttle anions to that side to cancel out the positive charge created uh, with the zinc 2 plus cation. All right. So now let's break it down even further. With silver, were we gaining or losing electrons on this side? Looks like we're gaining electrons. So let's make a list. On this one, we lost electrons. All right, if we gained electrons, that means we must be, have been reduced. Or on this side, it was oxidized. All right, which side do you think is going to be our anode? So I always remember red cat, right? So the reduction side must be our cathode. Where this one must be our anode. So you can remember red cat to get your way through this one. And then last but not least, our cathode is always represented as our positive terminal. And then our anode is represented as our negative terminal. Some people get confused by this, right? So why is this terminal with silver uh, represented with a positive charge? Does anybody know why? Just symbolically looking at our battery. I would say it's positive just simply because the electrons are attracted to that side, right? So it's a simple way of thinking about which side is positive and negative. Your positive side is going to be the side pulling electrons towards it.